Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, we are continuing to do some autopsies on the bloodbath of a legislative session that just wrapped up. And in taking a look at House Bill 1630, it appears that there are several new restrictions coming your way to the lawful and responsible gun owner. So today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about all the places you can no longer carry a firearm thanks to House Bill 1630. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, click the subscribe button. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming to make sure that we're getting our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, as we know, for all of us that were geeking out during the entire legislative session, and my goodness, thank you to the Washington State Legislature for providing all sorts of material for us to use this past legislative session. But one of three bills to pass, as you know, there were seven bills that were kicking around. Three of them passed. Um, we've spent a lot of time talking about Senate Bill 5078, the high magazine capacity uh, ban. And we've also spent a lot of time talking about 1705, a ban on untraceable firearms and 80% lowers. We're going to spend some time geeking out on House Bill 1630. And I'm going to be honest with you, the news is not particularly encouraging when we get into this bill and take a look at what's happening. Now, for those that were watching the channel, you will remember another House bill called 1618 that had some very clear restrictions about where we could carry firearms as it related to elections. Now, we were reporting that 1618 got nowhere and 1618 did go nowhere, but they did take sections of 1618, threw it into 1630, and the bill, the engrossed substitute bill, which is passed and will be signed by the governor, contains provisions from both 1630 and 1680. Okay, so 1630 essentially does three things, and we're going to break those three things down for you so that you can understand all the new wonderful restrictions that have been placed on you, the lawful and responsible gun owner, by your state legislature. Okay, so the first thing that 1630 did, and this was the, all along was the advertised purpose of House Bill 1630, is 1630 takes RCW 9.41.280. For those of us who have been watching the channel, knows that we know that that is the statute that restricts firearms on school grounds with very limited exceptions. Now, uh, House Bill 1630 actually modifies RCW 9.41.280 in several different ways to expand those restrictions within the statute. The first thing it does, and this follows up on a long line of possession cases that have come out of the drug world, including a case called State v. Blake that essentially uh, found that all of Washington's uh, possession laws were unconstitutional, is that the bill does add the word knowingly to it. So a person doesn't merely possess a firearm in a restricted area. They have to knowingly possess a firearm in a restricted area. Now, the big crux, the big crux of this first part of 1630 is that in addition to the school facilities where we can no longer carry firearms, um, this, this section of 1630 also restricts firearms in any areas, facilities being used for school meetings. As a matter of fact, once enacted into law, RCW 9.41.280 subsection 1 will specifically read, it is unlawful for a person to knowingly carry onto or possess on public or private elementary or secondary school premises, school provided transportation, areas of facilities while being used exclusively by public or private schools, or areas of facilities while being used for the official meetings of a school district board of directors. And then it goes on to list all of the things, including firearms. So what essentially the statute is doing is it's taking the restrictions found in 280 and expanding it not just to where the kids are learning, but where the school district is conducting its business and where they're holding public meetings. Now, there is one exception to this, and that is if the school district is holding a meeting in a building that it does not own or lease, it is having it at a community center or something like that, essentially neutral territory and the possessor of the firearm has a valid concealed pistol license and the firearm is concealed, this law does not prohibit that. And finally, and of course, this is very important to save lives in the spirit of Initiative 1639, all school boards must now post signs 
telling you that firearms are restricted. Now, the next part of this bill is perhaps the most troubling one on a couple of different levels, because the second thing that 1630 does is it expands the open carry bans that were initially passed on Senate Bill 5038. And as for those of you who recall, last year we passed legislation that banned the open carry of firearms on the West Capitol grounds, or essentially the part of Olympia where all the government buildings and businesses conducted. Now, to follow up along that, uh, House Bill 1630 now bans possession of firearms at municipal, county, and city buildings. So with the passage of 1630, RCW 9.41.305, which currently bans open carry on the Capitol grounds, will now have a new section amended to it, so the statute will read, Unless it's exempt under subsection 3 of this section, it is unlawful for any person to knowingly open carry a firearm or other weapon as defined in 941.300 while knowingly being in the following locations. And subsection A, of course, was the West Capitol grounds. The newly amended statute has a new subsection B, which reads, City, town, county, or other municipal buildings used in connection with meetings of the governing body of the city, town, county, or other municipality, or any location of a public meeting or hearing of the governing body of a city, town, county, or other municipality during the hearing or meeting. So what this section of 1630 is doing, it is mandating, mandating to all cities, municipalities, towns, and counties that they shall ban firearms from their buildings. This is not an elective. It's not like cities may ban firearms if they so desire, where certainly you would find most cities in the Puget Sound region would do exactly that. But many cities in eastern Washington who still respect our Second Amendment rights might not ban those firearms in their buildings. And this is not a creative interpretation of this bill. The mandatory nature of this is spelled out in subsection 6 of this section, which specifically tells municipalities, a city, town, county, or other municipality must post signs providing notice of restrictions on possession of firearms and other weapons under this section at any location specified in subsection 1b of this statute. So yes, they are not going to allow the town of Ellensburg, the town of Cleelum, the city of Spokane to determine whether or not they want to permit firearms in their building. Instead, in their infinite wisdom, our state legislature has told all municipalities, towns, cities, and counties, no, you need to ban firearms from your buildings and you need to post signs. Now, for both of these new restrictions, that is carrying a firearm to a school board meeting or carrying a firearm into a municipal city or county building, the penalty for a first offense is a simple misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. However, all subsequent offenses will be charged as gross misdemeanors punishable by up to a year in jail and a $5,000 fine. But wait, there's more because if you are found in violation of either of these two sections I previously mentioned, you will lose your concealed pistol license for a period of three years and if you do not have a concealed pistol license, you will be ineligible to apply for a period of three years. And finally, 1630 also restricts firearms at many locations associated with elections. In fact, a new section to RCW 9.41 will be added, which will read, Except as provided in subsection 3 and 4 of this section, it is unlawful for a person to knowingly carry onto or possess in a ballot counting center, a voting center, a student engagement hub, or the county elections and voter registration office, or areas of facilities while being used as a ballot counting center, a voting center, a student engagement hub, or the county elections and voter registration office, a any firearm. So for ballot counting centers, student engagement hubs, voting registration centers, or any place in which ballots are, be counted, are being counted, you can no longer carry a firearm as soon as this bill is signed into legislation by Governor Inslee. Now, the penalties for this violation is similar to the other two, where a first one would constitute a simple misdemeanor, any subsequent event, offense would constitute a gross misdemeanor, and any conviction would either forfeit or make you ineligible for a concealed pistol license for three years. There is one exception to this statute, and that, that is a person could conceal carry a firearm to any one of these locations with the exception of a place in which ballots are actually being counted. There is an absolute prohibition against firearms concealed or otherwise at any place that is counting ballots. 
So there you have it. That's House Bill 1630, which is sitting on Governor Zinsley's desk, ready to be signed. When passed into legislation, it will restrict the carrying of firearms to school board meetings. It will restrict the carrying of firearms to most county, city, and municipal buildings. And it will restrict the carrying of firearms at almost all election locations. Listen, you may have more questions about this crazy legislation or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Hello everyone, thanks for watching Washington Gun Law TV. Hey, I want to remind all of you lawful and responsible gun owners that Washington Gun Law is going live again Monday, April 4th at 7 p.m. That's Monday, April 4th at 7 p.m. I'm sure we will have lots to talk about. We will have more follow-up from this year's bloodbath of a legislative session, and I'm sure the ATF will continue to run their train off the tracks, giving us plenty to talk about. So bring your thoughts, bring your questions, most importantly, bring yourself. Monday, April 4th, 7 p.m. right here on YouTube. We'll see you then. In the meantime, stay safe.